Good morning, Booktube. This is Johnny. Get a full view of me. Well, this this part of me. Uh, it is February the 22nd, 2018. It is a Thursday morning here in West Michigan. It is 1058. It is 69 degrees inside the hermit hut. I am writing in my diary. I'm on page 142 for the year 2018. I have been, well, this morning I read uh, William Perkins, Volume 3. As I have mentioned, I've been, Volume 3 is a commentary on Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews is a an epistle that you find in the New Testament. It's right after Philemon, right here, the epistle of Hebrews. And chapter 11 is called, By Faith We Understand. What's the heroes of faith? Uh, I was on verse 8 of chapter 11 of Hebrews. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to a place which he would receive as an inheritance, and he went out not knowing where he was going. So I read that this morning. I've read in this volume 131 pages. So I read some of that. And then I was looking at the introduction to a book I got in the mail yesterday, The Diaries of... It, you know, this is uh, Spanish, which I do not, I do not know any Spanish or pronunciation of Spanish. But this is the diaries of Emelo Rendez, formative years. This was written. This is a fictionalized autobiography by Ricardo Picalele. Pick Picalele. I don't know. It's, it's embarrassing. Uh, this is translated by Robert Kroll, introduction by Ian Stavins. So I was reading the introduction to this. I got it in the mail yesterday. And I've been reading yesterday and today, well, not today, I read this the last couple days, The Art of Flight. This is also a kind of Autobiogra autobiographical, fictional, multi-genre kind of book by uh, Sergio Pito, translated from the Spanish by George, George Henson. Uh, I got this last year and uh, I read it for a while. And the other night I was down the lower level just looking at my books and I picked this up again. And I was reading it, and I just that's hit my spot. So I've been reading that. I also got in the mail this week uh, the memoirs from the grave, 1768 to 1800, by a friend, Francisus Reen de Chatter, Chatterbrine. Uh, this is a New York Review Classics original. This was translated. By, from the French by Alex Hander, Handeriz. Uh, this is a very famous book. Uh, well, it's not a book, it's a, it's a memoirs. And uh, it has back here, the best autobiography ever written. The old Viscount could write one hell of a sentence. It's an incredible book by Paul Asher. Chatterbrine's Memoirs from the Beyond the Grave is at once sublime literature, brilliant history seen by a fiercely intelligent eyewitness, and self-portrait of a remarkable and complex man. This is by quoting R.S. Klein. Uh, I ordered this way back in August of 2017 and I got in the mail. And I got in the mail the new uh, Steve Eckerson novel, Shadow, Shadow Brian, Los Angeles Times Book of the Year, uh, 
It says here in the back, when the Twin Towers suddenly reappear in the Badlands of South Dakota two decades after their fall, nobody can explain their return. To the tens of thousands drawn to the American Stonehenge, including Parker and Zima, siblings driving from L.A. to Michigan, the towers seem to sing even though everybody hears a different song. And on the 93rd floor of the South Tower, Jesse Presley, the stillborn twin of the most famous singer who ever lived, suddenly awakens over the days and months and years to come. He's driven mad by a voice in his head that sounds like his, but it isn't in the memory of a country where he survived in his brother's place. So begins Shadowbrine, a, cal a kaleidoscopic musical road trip across the dreamscape of American destiny. Original and fearless in vision and form, Steve Atkinson's novel speaks to our current times and to a nation defiling its own, defiling its own great idea the moment that idea was born. Uh, Neil, Neil Gaiman writes, a beautiful and moving strange examination of apocalyptic and rebirth. J Jonathan Lethem, jaw-dropping, a tour de force, a tour de forcers, tour de force. Anyway, I I read last year or the year before a novel of his. I can't remember. It was like more of a memoir kind of thing. But, so I got that in the mail. I got the uh, new Super, Super Chunk CD in the mail. What Time to Be Alive. Super Chunk is one of my favorite kind of punk rock groups. This was their last album before this one. This one is Why I, What a Time to Be Alive by Super Chunk. And then they put out Super Chunk, I Hate Music. And then they put out, after a long time, Super Chunk, Majestic Shredding. And these are all their CDs by Super Chunk. These are earlier CDs. This is Super Chunk Ch Foolish. And then you have Super Chunk, No Pokey for Kitty. And then you have Super Chunk, Here's the sh Shutting Up. And Super Chunk, here's where the strings come in, Super Chunk. Super Chunk, Incidental Music, 1991-95. Super Chunk, Come Pick Me Up. And then you have Super Chunk, On the Mouth. This is another anthology, Super Chunk, Cup of Sand, specially priced two CD collection of singles, B-sides, rarities, unreleased tracks. Super Chunk Tossing Seeds, singles, 89 to 91. And I show these. Super Chunk is one of my favorite kind of rock, punk groups. The founders of Super Chunk, his name is, it just escapes me right now, but they started Merge Records. And they they have their own record label, Merge Records. It was started by Super Chunk. Can't remember their names right now. My I have a poor memory. Anyway, they started. Uh, there's the band members of Super Chunk. What was his name? It's not even here in the in the lining notes. Anyway. Uh, they started Merge Records, which is a major indie pop rock label. I went to the thrift stores yesterday with a friend of mine and found Who Owns History, Reflinking, Reflinking, Rethinking the Past in a Changing World by Eric Fomner. I found a novel by Joyce Kara Oates I didn't have. I, I have like 35 of her books and... If I see a, a, a book by Joyce Kara Oates, I just buy it. If I have it, I take it to the book nook, the library used bookstore. But I didn't have this one. It's called The Sacrifice. This is Annie Pol Polak's 
close range Miami stories. I had this in an old paperback and I found a hardback. And then I found the Odes of Horace, a bilingual edition, a translation by David Ferry. And a biography on Andrew Carney by David Ninshaw. I had this already in my library, but I wasn't sure. So I'll take, I'll take this to the book nook. So that's why I found at thrift stores. Oh, I was going to show you this. I didn't show you this. I got, I got this yesterday at a thrift store. The Portable Romantic Poets. Blake to Poe, edited by W. H. Auden. And when I opened up the book, the paperback, there was this letter inside it. And this letter was dated February the 29th, 1992. Now I was going to throw it away, but I was just kind of curious what was in the letter. So here's a little letter. So now remember, this is Romantic Poets Valentine's Day. Friday, and here's the letter, I'll read it to you. Friday, 12 noon, at the Golden Griddles Pancake House, February 28th, 1992. I know it's the 28th because today is Joni's birthday, and mine is in a week. I would... I. I worked out this morning. That's three in a row she worked out, probably exercise. Helps rid me of some of this make-believe stress, self-induced stress. I had a craving for pancakes. I'm my way since, in my way, okay, I'm my way since they are, in my way they are, since they are healthy, something like that. But then, I've always believed in sugar. Of course, the whole milk is fat, whole milk is fatty. I've been drinking a lot of milk lately, three to four glasses a day. I wonder why. I'm, I am desired in my fantasies. When I run out of fun, I am always left with the humiliation of a full grown woman alone in the dark laying on her bed, kissing the backs of her wrists passionately, repeating endlessly, love you, I am sunk. If you were my neighbor, you and I would be having pancakes on the spur of the moment, on a Friday noontime. I get so lonely, my husband is a drunk. I go to bed by myself. I... I wake, I pick up the mess his left, he's, he's left me. I leave the house to work out, to shop, to do chores. If I say, let's go out for breakfast, let's go out for lunch, I'm not nearly, I'm not ready to get up yet. He'll get up at 2, two o'clock p.m. He'll watch TV till 3 o'clock p.m. He'll shower, he'll pick up his dirty clothes. I'll pick up his dirty clothes, he leaves, comes home after work, after drinks at 2 o'clock a.m. another day. I pretend you are with me. You are always with me. The pancakes are terrific. I'm glad I came. I love you. Annie. <laughs> so, sounds like a really dismal kind of marriage, doesn't it? Especially when she wrote this on Valentine's Day. To her friend. So, I found that letter in the, uh, the book on romantic poetry. Keep it in there. It's kind of a sad letter, but there are a lot of bad marriages, I suppose, out there. Well, not, and there are probably a lot of good marriages. I mean, I have, my wife and I are really happily married. I mean, I've been, been going this year we've been married 39 years and it just seems like yesterday we got married so that's what's going on uh like i said today is a thursday the 22nd next thursday would be march the 1st and my wife will be in denver colorado visiting our daughter 
and her husband Andy and our three grandchildren, Louisa, Margaret, and baby Jack, I'll be sitting here in my hermit hut, writing in my diary, reading my books, sitting in silence, watching the birds. Spring will be coming soon, and the existence keeps flowing by. So yeah, I, I got some books coming in the mail this week. I was thinking about going to another thrift store this morning, but I don't know. I might just sit here, download this video, read some more of the introduction to this book, The Diaries of Elmelo Roas, Formative Years. This is a three volume work and it's being translated and uh, it says here, a giant of contemporary Latin American literature Argentine novelist Ricardo Pigalle, secret mo magnum opus was a comp compilation of 327 notebooks that he composed over nearly six, six decades in which he imagined himself as his literary alter ego, Emao Reyes, a world-weary detective. Reyes stars in many of his creator's works much like Philip Roth, Nathaniel Zuckerman. But the res of these diaries is something more complex, a multi-layered reconstruction of the self that is teased out over intricate, illuminating pages. As Pegley Reyes develops as a reader and writer, falls in love and tussles with his tyrannical father, we get an eye-opening perspective of, on Latin America's tumultuous 20th century. Obsessed with literary giants like Borges, Kelzar, both of whom he knew, to Kafa and Camus, the diaries comprise a celebration of reading as a vital and existential activity. A celebration of reading as a vital existential activity. I like that line. So yeah, I'll probably look at this. I'm looking at this. I'm looking at this. Reading William Perkins. Listening to the new Super Chunk. What a time to be alive. Writing in my diary, watching the birds, growing old, losing my hair. And life goes on. So this is a Thursday. This is not a Friday Reads. It's a Thursday Reads. Hope you had a good week. And until next time, well, I also should say thank you for the subscribers. Thank you for those who left. Thank you for those who stayed. And thank you that who, are, who watch and don't subscribe. I'm not here to get subscribers. I'm here just to share my love for literature. And that's about it. If I have one person who watches this video, I say thumbs up. Till next time, bye.